Hello and welcome back to Payday 2 101, with your host as always, my dry bread. Today I'm going to be going into a general ghost build, the last of the general builds, before we get into the more advanced builds. Again, this is going to be a build for leveling, so you will see Fast Learner. Before we get on to the actual ghost skills, let's go over the rest of the trees because there isn't much in them. In Mastermind, we have Endurance Aced, of course, so that we can run a lot. Cable Guy Aced, because with all your stealth missions, you will have to type a lot of people. Fast Learner Aced, so that you get experience quickly. And Spotter, this is one we haven't gone into very much. Basic is when you mark enemies, that is, hit F to spot them, they take 15% more damage. This isn't a big deal, but Aced is what matters here. It allows you to buy the job asset of a spotter in many stealth missions, so someone off-map will be spotting most of the enemies for you. This is quite useful in a lot of missions. Next we have an Enforcer. All we've taken is Transporter Ace, so that you aren't slowed down much by bags and you can throw them quite far. In Technician, all we've taken are Nerves of Steel, so you take half damage while interacting with things. 96 of our points, of our 120 points at level 100, are actually here in Ghost. So let me go over everything. We of course have our standard stuff of Cat Burglar, Sprinter Ace, Fast Hands Ace, Shinobi. I'll go over everything else now, because I've gone over those skills in just about every other general video. We have Chameleon Basics, so in casing mode we can now mark guards and cameras, as well as increasing our concealment by 25% overall. Cleaner Aced means that we can not only buy the asset, which gives us three extra body bags, but you carry an extra body bag on you. That counts towards your max, so that does mean that if you were to use a body bag, you can then pick one up from the bag of the assets you bought, and carry two at a time, unlike your usual player. We have SMG Specialist Ace, so you reload SMGs faster, and they shoot faster, because most of your secondaries will be SMGs. We have ECM Specialist Ace, so you not only have two ECM jammers, but they last 25% longer, and they delay pagers. Mind you, you can't turn it on while a pager has already started, but if you turn it on before the pager has started, then the pager won't go off until the ECMs have stopped. This gives you more time to do whatever it is you need to do before everyone goes to answer the pagers. We have Sil Silent Killer Aced. Basic is you deal 15% more damage with all silenced weapons. Aced is another 15% that stacks and a 15% chance to pierce enemy armor with silenced weapons. This all around means that depending on what silencers you pick, you can actually be doing more damage with a silencer than without. The Professional Basic means that you have 50% more stability with silenced weapons. This is great, especially if someone on the team has aced leadership and mastermind. That'll give you double stability. And aced, the accuracy with si silenced weapons is increased by 50%, and your snap to zoom, or your right click to go into the iron sight, is 100% faster with silenced weapons. So between 50% accuracy and stability bonus, you become very accurate and very deadly with silenced weapons. ECM Overdrive. Basic is it lasts another 25% longer. This brings it up to 30 seconds, which is the longest an ECM can last. And Aced, your ECM jammers can open certain doors. What it means is you can now use an ECM jammer as a utility item to actually open an electronic door. That ECM then cannot be used for feedback, however, or for turning off pagers or anything. It is still very, very useful in a lot of stages, though. We have Lockpicking Expert Ace, so not only do you lockpick or pick locks much, much faster, but you can also crack the locks on safes. Now, you can't do this on a Titan safe, but any black safe you can pick open in 45 seconds completely silently. Very useful, much faster than a drill, and it's silent unlike C4 and doesn't require any items to be used up. We have ECM Feedback Ace. This is one that not many players talk about, but after using it a lot on the team, this is an incredible ability to have aced. Whenever you put down an ECM, that is to say, use it normally, not use it as a utility item, you can then interact with it. Once placed and used, all enemies in a large area of effect will start holding their hands over their ears and be completely defenseless. Now I say all enemies, all enemies can be affected, however there's a percent chance that some won't right away. But every one and a half seconds there's another chance for that one to be affected. 
I do want to point out this works on special enemies and it completely stops them from protecting themselves or fighting back. This does work on bulldozers, including overkill difficulty and death wish difficulty bulldozers. This can really save the entire team. And with ECM Specialist, you can use this twice, one for each ECM you have. This is a lifesaver. And lastly, we have Camera Loop. You only need this basic. It lets you interact with cameras to silently loop them for 10 seconds. The crew can only have one camera looped at a time, so you only need one person on the crew with camera loop. But when you loop the camera, it's basically turned off for 10 seconds. You never need to ace this, the extra 10 seconds is never really utilized in the game. You can get past any of these without doing that. Now onto the loadout, first with your main primary weapon in a shootout. I call it loud, it's your usual loud car for all the same mods that I always say each time. However, barrel extension. The bigger the better suppressor. Although it takes away a bit of damage, you will come out with much better stats actually than you would normally get with competitor's compensator because of our silent killer and professional perks. So this is actually what you want to do with your loud car 4. Either in that, it's just a normal loud car 4. For secondaries, we're going to be using the Cobus 90 submachine gun. This is the same one that we've gone over before, I believe in the technician build, except the bigger the better suppressor. Once again, I believe normally we use the competitor's compensator. We're going to be using, or no, we use the fire breather normally. But we're going to be using the bigger the better suppressor for the exact same reason that I explained before. Again, I call it allowed. It's really just for shootout. Neither of these guns are going to be allowed because of your suppressors. On to your stealth loadouts, we're back to the stealth car 4. This is the same one that I've explained a thousand times over, except this time you absolutely need the stealth barrel rather than the short barrel because you're gonna get all around across the board upgrades having the stealth barrel instead of the short barrel, so no reason to have two if you're gonna be a hardcore ghost. For stealth secondaries, we of course start with the Gruber Kurtz silenced with size doesn't matter. This is the same one I've gone over before. And it's just that little bit more useful than it is usually, because of all of the silencer upgrades that we have. Lastly, if you want to have a silenced secondary weapon that could still be useful in the shootout, but you're going for concealment, we can take this Swedish K here. This is the most concealable weapon in the game, although we did take off a little bit of concealment uh, for the extension. I'll go into this now because I don't know if I've ever gone into the Swedish K. We have the Grease Barrel, decreases accuracy but gives you more concealment. Normally I would give it a stubby, but because we want this one to be silent we're going medium suppressor on it to add some stability. It's a little bit bigger, but you should be fine. For gadgets, we have no gadget on it. For grip, we have the Ergo Grip. We have no extended magazine because it increases concealment too much, although you could really get away with it with a ghost build. No sight. For stock, we have the folded stock, which increases concealment by a lot. And for upper receiver, we have the Swedish body. It does hurt your concealment, but it's so incredibly minor, you'll never notice. And it adds stability, which is something the gun very much needs. And thankfully, the professional skill will give you a lot of stability with this. That's it for this episode of Payday 2 101. Next, I'm going to be going into the first advanced build with the most requested video in the series, the Player Dozer. Everyone wants to see my Player Dozer build. If you're interested in this series and would like to watch more, a link to the playlist will both be on screen as well as in the description. This series will be ever updating as new patches change the game, so I'll keep you guys up to date. If you're looking for some teammates to play with, why not join in on my Steam group, linked in the description. And if you want to keep up with me, I've got my Facebook fan page and Twitter linked down there as well. Feel free to request I talk about anything in the game, as long as I don't already have a video on it in the playlist, and I look forward to seeing everyone's feedback. If you want to see me play some more Payday 2, click on the video on the left to check out my Payday 2 A Journey series. If you want to see a different game, the video on the right is of my newest Let's Play. That's it for this video, thank you all for watching, and until next time, have a nice day.